he is in an amazing school, ECAL, in Lausanne. He's the head of the design department and of foreign affairs, which is a title which is amazing for, for a school. I think all the other schools should also think about this title, to have somebody um, taking care of foreign affairs. He is a designer. And um, Alice, please, what would you like to ask Alex? Alexis. Well, my question is only tangentially related to education. It actually concerns a rival institution, though hopefully you're very friendly rivals, which is the exhibition of Design Academy Eindhoven um, during the Salone this week. The theme of the exhibition is really a reassertion of craftsmanship, and it begins with a statement that the era of celebrification in design, the era of the star designer, is over, and it's been replaced by a new passion for the purity of craftsmanship and an interest in making. Do you think that's true? Ooh, uh, okay. Um, um, what to say? Uh, I don't think that the, the era of star design, as you said, or as the, it, it, it's what you said, no? No, that's, no. that's the theme of the exhibition. The argument is that the era of star designers is over and that has been replaced by a love of craftsmanship and of making, which is a wonderful idea. Well, I don't know. Okay, I don't see the point because between the era of star design and craftsmanship being something... Uh, I didn't understand, no. Well, um, their assertion, Eindhoven's assertion, is that we've been through a period of time when the celebrity of the designer was all important. That was a dominant theme in design, but they now say we're all bored with that and that era is over. And what will replace that as a dominant theme in design is a love of making things and craftsmanship. So do you agree with that argument? Okay, now I'm done. No, I don't think that one replaces the other. I think both can coexist anyway. I mean, you can be a well-known designer and work with crafts. You can be an unknown <laughs> young designer and working with crafts. And I think that uh, to continue on the school relation thing is that I think schools uh, are the first uh, place that uh, craft is being, uh, I think, revisited in a way, because it's the, a very easy, in a way, and also uh, um, affordable and also a tangible way to work with these uh, techniques or materials in a non-industrial way, but also in a really easy way for young students and uh, young designers. And I think it's just a step before the industry, in a way, the really massive industry, and it's a learning field for most of them, and then they can continue on with their experience. Okay. okay. What do you say, Alice? There was an answer for you? <laughs> Absolutely. Very good. Then we can move over to Pierre Dose, another design critic, this time from France. Uh, I think quite feared in France for his bad tongue, in, in sometimes. Uh, earlier we were speaking that, uh, oh, Pierre was saying that he is um, a little bit depressed of the things which are happening around him in design. Just kind of to give you a hint, Alexis, I don't know what you would like to ask Pierre. Yeah, in a way, do you think that uh, craft is like a substitute for the industry in some uh, fields, in a way, or not? I don't think at all. Um, I'm quite interested by, by craft myself. Uh, being a, a teacher and theoretically being responsible for theory uh, and history, um, my first urge was to go down to the uh, workshops in order to, uh, to be able to be as close as possible to, to crafts. And I think it's very... Uh, it's absolutely fascinating for someone <clears throat> like me, who's uh, almost uh, an invalid in terms of transforming material into something uh, useful or beautiful. Um, and then there are very complicated things happening when you uh, <clears throat> handle those processes. It's about, the, uh, it's about thinking. It's about thinking with your hands. So it's something I, I really, uh, that really interests me. Uh, then, when I got into design, the first uh, thing that uh, 
it drove me was the, uh, the political side and the social side of it, which was very closely to me related to industrial processes. In that meaning that industrial processes allow design to be massive, allow design to be uh, what could be better for the larger uh, amount of people. Uh, it appeared and that it was uh, quite naive uh, that first it's never been true uh, and second it's not even necessary. As uh, Konstantin Gricic uh, told a bit before, an hour ago, um, about his new chair for Magis that's going to be produced in a very uh, small amount, it's not that interesting actually to aim at the maximum uh, quantity of people. Uh, and design is not necessarily about that. And I think one of the important things today is to get rid of uh, all this Bauhaus, constructivist, uh, even this style uh, um, load that's around the designers and that actually uh, protect them from criticism because uh, they feel like uh, they still belong to that territory which is very um, much related to a political field and to some responsibilities and some social aims, which is not true for a very long time. Uh, what we've seen for the last six, seven years was so deeply about decoration, so deeply about games and had nothing to do with any uh, uh, social uh, ambitions. So I think it's time to um, get rid of that and probably to get rid of the uh, industrial uh, thing too as uh, the one condition that would make design what it is. Uh, then it's always tricky because uh, so many beautiful things uh, became beautiful thanks to those industrial processes. Uh, and that I wouldn't like to uh, to see disappear through uh, craftsmanship, for instance. Because I think it's yeah, there's something tricky about industry that I don't really understand, but um, that transforms things into something else, which is not uh, craftsmanship and and deserves to exist and make probably uh, most of uh, the territory that we know as design. Uh, design. And there is something a bit demagogical to me to go back to your proposal regarding uh, uh, Eindhoven and this, uh, oh that's the end of the star designer, but who made the star designer? Who pushed it so hard all those years? Who made all those uh, 150 uh, graduates every year uh, dreaming of becoming the new star?